the Beijing Swift is a bird that can fit you know, in the palm of your hand. This bird can fly all the way from Beijing to South Africa and back. Yeah, we only recently discovered this. Uh, this is a, a bird that's very well known in Beijing, you know, and every year it arrives in April, it, it goes in July. And nobody knew where they went for the winter. We sort of, people presumed they probably went to South China or maybe India. And then through a, a project working with volunteers from Beijing, you know, including a wide range of people. I think only two professional scientists, everyone else was like a taxi driver or a teacher or a student or a shopkeeper. And with, with this group of volunteers, we used this very new technology called geolocators, which store data about the location and fitted some to birds at the Summer Palace. And then a year later, we went back to the Summer Palace to try to catch the same birds that had these geolocators fitted. And we were able in one hour to catch 13 of the original 30, download the data and show that these birds go all the way to South Africa for the winter and come back. And the even more incredible thing is that they almost certainly do this journey without landing at all. So they eat in the air, drink in the air, even sleep in the air. And so nature is full of these incredible stories. You know, when this story has been told in schools around Beijing, the students want to do something to help the swift. They hear that the population is going down because the loss of the old buildings that the swifts like to nest in. They've got holes and nooks and crannies for the, for the swifts to nest in. And of course, the new buildings that are replacing the old buildings are generally very straight lines, no holes, no home for the swifts, so the population's going down. So when the students heard about this, they wanted to help. You know, they, they, they think, wow, this bird, you know, it flies all the way to South Africa, it comes back, and then when it comes back, maybe its home is gone. You know, we have to help them. And so they started to make special nest boxes for swifts and put them up on their campuses. Then one girl put her hand up and said, okay, this is very easy to make the nest boxes, but can we also write to the building companies and ask them to make their new buildings more friendly for swifts? And so four students got together, they wrote a letter to the CEO of China's most famous building company, Soho China, and asked her to meet with him to talk about swift. And he wrote back and said, please come see me. I, did, I didn't know about this bird. And so they had a little workshop where the students explained about the incredible migration, the lifestyle, how the population's going down and what the schools are doing to help. He stood up and he said, wow, he said, you know, I didn't know about this bird before. And he said, we've been making buildings for 20 years to make people's lives better. And now I realize we should be making buildings not only for people, but also for biodiversity. And he, he made some commitments around putting up nest boxes on his existing buildings, integrating into the design of new buildings, the right size holes for swifts, and promoting biodiversity among the building sector. So this story just shows you how discovering incredible stories about species can inspire people to do incredible things.